That's interesting because you could flow chemicals past the particle, hold it in place, uh, do some chemical reaction on the particle, maybe uh, play around with, uh, with, uh, with it, or, and then move it somewhere else and move it back, and, and we have the ability to do that. I hope you can hear this. This is an experiment where we use the Doppler shift off the particle um, to, to measure its speed. So uh, we launched, in this case, two particles into the, the, into the fiber. The system really was, that here's the end of the fiber, the light comes in, it gets reflected from the end face, that's your reference laser beam. The other one reflects off the particle, comes back, particle's moving, so we have a frequency shifted signal, those interfere and give you an audible signal. So, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Well, it's not my. You should clap uh, Martin Garbas and Tamanuza for this wonderful movie. Um, it's really spooky. There, what's actually going on is, is physics very interesting. These particles are talking to each other through the light. Because if you only have one particle, it goes along very boring, or the frequency is more or less constant. With two of them, they're somehow talking to each other. And we think this is because they're, they're some higher automotive excited uh, during the scattering process, which changes the force on the other particle. And somehow they, they sense the presence of each other. So it's like a living system. It's very strange. Yeah. <laughs> what do we want to do with this? Well, just the last picture. One of the things, the serious things we want to do with this is take cells or vesicles, put them in the holocore hold them in place using light with a microfluidic counterflow. We can add biochemicals to that counterflow. And we're working with a group that is investigating uh, uh, anti-cancer drugs. They would like to be able to look at single cells and see what happens with their cisplatin uh, drugs that they're using. Um, and one can excite these, these photochemicals, for example, from the side. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. We, it's very preliminary at the moment. This is Sarah Unterkofler in her first year of PhD. She's managed to get a HeLa cell to sit at the entrance to the holocore, but it refused to go in. It was very stubborn. It wouldn't go in. Even though it should have, it wouldn't go. So we don't quite understand why that is, but uh, soon we hope to manage to persuade them to go in. So just very briefly before I stop, um, this is just selected things that I haven't talked about. You can put metallic nanowires into these hollow channels and play all sorts of wonderful games. Uh, this is an azimuthally polarizing nanowire fiber. In the center of the core, there is a gold nanowire, which is a diameter of a few hundred nanometers. This, this, uh, this makes it a polarizing fiber. Uh, you can play wonderful games with the interaction between uh, trapped acoustic resonances in the core and the guided light. Uh, very intense photon-photon interactions. Um, you can do uh, photochemistry in, in the fiber by filling it with liquid, with chemist chemicals and driving it with light. Um, all sorts of things that one, one can do, but I know I've used up my time, so I should stop talking. And you're going to get a Hollywood-style um, scrolling of, of credits. It's not actually credits. These are, the, this is a list of the things you can do. Uh, you can do new kinds of fiber optics. You can make all sorts of interesting devices in the fiber. You can do biomedical chemical sensors. Um, a lot of these are very new. I mean, not many people working on them yet. I've talked about deep UV generation, laser guidance of particles, stimulated Raman. We have wonderful control of, of chromatic dispersion. Uh, that's unprecedented. You couldn't do it with fibers before. I talked about intense optoacoustic for about five seconds. Um, let me scroll it to the end. You've heard about clocks yesterday with uh, Ted Hench's wonderful talk. Um, so, anyway, I should. You can look at that and uh, I'll stop talking. <laughs> Okay, Professor Russell would entertain two or three questions. So if you have a question, please stand up and speak clearly and slowly. I can certainly comment on that. It's a very good question. I, I didn't, didn't have time to talk about that. We've measured a loss of around 3 decibels per meter at 266 nanometers. We, measured that. we were able to measure that directly. Um, the interesting thing about Kagome, it's really got quite a relatively large core. It's around 20 um, microns in this case. Um, 
uh, and 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 when as the wavelength of the light gets shorter and shorter, the the the, the, the rays of light, the glancing incidence becomes more and more glancing. So so you end up in a situation where just just the simple total external reflection, if I call it that, is sufficient to give you low loss because the wavelength is so short. Um, there are no particular bands of guidance at, the, at, the, when you, these, at these short wavelengths. The structure is much too coarse to do anything very uh, exciting to the UV light, so far as we understand it, at least. Um, if you go to a higher order mode in the ultraviolet, the losses are enormous. They become really huge because the angle, the glancing angle, is no longer so small. So we think... Um, and, of course, the length of fiber is only 20 centimeters in this particular experiment. Uh, so that's, that's our current understanding. Um, it's not a problem, in other words, as far as we can tell. Yes. I missed the Please question. stand up, stand up, Michael. <laughs> What's the mechanism that makes the UV light? You said it's not third harmonic. Yeah, I, I tried to explain that, actually. Um, obviously, I... I missed it. Oh, you missed it. All right. Uh, the mechanism is... Uh, let me... Uh, best if I get a picture, actually. So... I just get. Where are you? Come on. All right. Uh, probably best if I look at this one. So, so here you see first of all the pulses coming in with a, with a relatively narrow spectrum. During the first seven centimeters or so, what you're seeing is the spectrum of the pulse broadening through cell phase modulation. But there is also weak anomalous dispersion in this case. It's really quite weak, but it's enough just to keep the pulse together so it doesn't break up into bands or something like that. So, and there's no Raman scattering because this is argon gas. So, so we have very beautiful broadening of the spectrum and, and, and temporal compression of the pulse. It's the perfect conditions for temporal compression. So then we get down at about 7 centimeters in this case to a pulse duration of uh, 2 or 3 femtoseconds or maybe more. We haven't, we, we haven't measured it exactly, but the modeling suggests that kind of duration. That is also very intense with about a microjoule of energy. And then, the, then what happens is that the self-steepening term kind of kicks in, which, which is able to generate other frequencies. But at the same time, we have on the other side of the zero dispersion wavelength in the anomalous dispersion regime, which is in far into the ultraviolet, there, there is a phase matching possible between the, the pump, between this, this pump pulse, which now has all these other frequencies in it, and, and this band in the ultraviolet that, that is phase matched. It's called coherence, uh, coherent... Um, radiation in the ultraviolet. And, and again, it's the dispersion of the fiber that g- gives you that. For free, you don't have to fight for it. It's there. Tune the pressure, you can, you can, you can move that phase-matching wavelength to where you want it to be. So that's, uh, that's, that's my best uh, short explanation of what's going on. Okay. Here. Yes, you mentioned that you can use uh, these uh, fibers on the atoms, the atoms, maybe yeah. atoms, you certainly can, yes, there's a number of groups doing that, including ourselves. Um, people have used femtosecond laser machining, which is a bit brutal, actually. You, you smash up all the structure. You can use focused ion beam etching. Then you get a beautiful, very beautiful channel cut, cut into the core. So, yes, you can do that. Um, but of course, there is that paper by the Michel Lucan and his guys in Harvard who, who put rubidium atoms into a hover core and managed to get, with 100 atoms, I think they managed to get full, full, uh, full absorption of photons. So it's very nice. But we're working with them to try and improve their experiment, actually. But, uh, but yes, I mean, it, 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 it's sort of, there are two answers to your question, therefore, that you can drill from the side and people are doing it. You can do other things as well, actually. You don't need to drill from the side. If you simply cleave the fiber, so you have two, two hollow core fibers facing each other, you don't need index matching fluid because the index matching fluid is vacuum essentially for these fibers. So you just have to put them closely together and you won't even be able to measure the loss. And then you have a crack through the, which the gas can go. So, so actually, it's, there's, there's actually no need to, to drill holes. I keep telling my students, don't forget about drilling holes. It's, this is much simpler and it's adjustable too. So, yeah. <clears throat> Another question. Let me mention why Professor Russell mentioned the music of the spheres because he is not only an excellent scientist but he is an excellent pianist and when we, the two of us were together in a, in a meeting in Wroclaw, Breslau uh, he played beautifully to the members of the audience I wish we had a piano here then <laughs> during the break he would have played for us My talk would take too long. <laughs> so let me thank on behalf of all of you to Professor Russell With this, 
we end the plenary session. Let's take a 20 minute coffee break and resume the session. Beautiful talk. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How do you feel? Yeah, I, I'm actually okay. I, 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 I took some.